Hi there, my name is Elena and I'm finally visiting Lviv. <laughs> Look how beautiful this place is. This looks like egg yolk, but it's melted cheese. Mm, still a little bit bitter. As people in Lviv like to say, it's unlike anything else that you've seen in Ukraine. It's more like a piece of Poland or Czech Republic. Also, people say that in Lviv they have the best coffee, the best beer, and the most happening and quirky culinary scene. So all of those are bold claims that I want to check. And while I'm doing that, please subscribe to my channel for more expat in Ukraine content every week. And let's go and explore the city. Hey guys, we've made it to Lviv. I have the energy of a snail right now because we arrived here at 7.30 a.m. really early. Bad news is we have to wait until 11 a.m. to check in into Airbnb. We already had some tea, some breakfast, but I'm literally falling asleep. When we arrived, we realized it was Easter. Greek Catholics and Christian Orthodox celebrate Easter a little bit later in the year. Everything was closed, we had to stay inside of our Airbnb and just relax and then all the action started on day two. We decided to start with a BAM and go to the most fancy, the most reputed restaurant in Lviv. It's called Restauracja Bachevskich. It's been a place, a distillery first since 1782 and they had this restaurant for a while but it's one of the most famous restaurants in Lviv. This is an original ad from 1899 for the distillery. Look how beautiful this place is. It's like a jungle, like a urban paradise full of home plants and with this beautiful chandelier. Honestly, it is so enchanting. I got myself a Lvov Jurek. This is a Polish type of soup. Eugene got himself a borscht. And then we have some wheel and foie gras to share. I'm really excited for this meal. Mm. I think I just ate a piece of lard and some sausage. Potato was fresh radish. It's a little bit of onion and I think egg. Borscht, which is more like a bouillon. And then he has this dumpling. I think we should have uh, changed the order. I should have gotten the borscht and <laughs> the this yurik. It's really good, but it's so oily. Veal, potato and foie gras. Can't wait to take my pork into this. I am so full. Bring me the check, please. In total, we spent 540 grivnias and then 40 grivnias in tips. <laughs> And then it's super sunny again. <laughs> this is weather and V for you. So one cappuccino, one coffee and two macarons costed us 194 grivnias. If you are in for uh, coffee here, we recommend you visit this place. It's called Black Honey. Our experience was really good. This time, I think we've won the jackpot in terms of the place where we're staying. It's really authentic, really old style to give you a taste of old Lviv, and yet it has the most uh, modern and cool apartment that I've seen. Let's check it out. Yesterday, there were a lot of kids playing here, so uh, we saw a lot of that Lviv color. This is our podcast. It looks a little bit shabby and old, uh, but look at the staircase. The work is amazing. This is our floor. Somebody is a big fan of football here. You can basically see and feel like the spirit of the house. And then we go on this amazing long balcony. These two windows is us. Let me show you the apartment. Only 30 square meters, but so well thought. Straight from the entrance, you can see the kitchen. There is a cooking surface here. At the kettle, we make so many tears during the day and a very comfortable deep sink. 
and we have all the cutlery and all the place that we need also microwave and here hidden in this cabinet is the fridge so everything is super practical now if you look at the entrance there's a place to store our coats uh, a place for shoes we go into probably my favorite room which is the bathroom again pretty small but so efficient uh, the sink is pretty large i've already unpacked all of my cosmetics and here we have this long mirror and this long tabletop that can accommodate anything that you want to bring some storage under the sink for hair dryer some other stuff small toilet here and a shower a look at this beauty with natural light so if you turn up all the light and just keep this one uh, there's an impression that you are bathing somewhere outside there's a jungle shower and a simple shower so the room has been smartly divided into a living room and into a bedroom the living room has this pretty comfortable sofa i was working on it yesterday cabinet this live plant so beautiful we love house plants and a small tv and then this table where we eat with eugene but also where we work <laughs> and finally to the bedroom The bed is super comfortable. There is a wardrobe where we already put all of our clothes, so they're not in the luggage because this is really uncomfortable. Lviv's historic center is something special. It feels like you're walking in a movie set. Nice small streets, cafes, museums, restaurants, churches, and all of this packed in only one square kilometer. We are sitting on a gorgeous narrow balcony outside of the epic restaurant and just below us are people strolling. It's super busy today. This looks like egg yolk but it's melted cheese and some french fries with parmigiano. This is their signature epic burger. <gasps> Look at that cheese coming out of the burger and the patty. This is royal. The most decadent place for burgers, I assure you. <laughs> I was not very hungry coming in here, but seeing Eugene's super delicious burger, I decided that I needed to get something for myself. So I got some shrimps uh, in tempura and they came with a side of potatoes, which is huge. Look at this meal. This delicious lunch slash dinner costed us 620 grivnias. We never got tired of walking around looking at beautiful buildings and oh my god, they are gorgeous. Listening to street performance and trying new bars and restaurants, which are plenty in the city center. There is something really for everyone here. All streets are of cobblestone, so wear comfortable shoes, especially if you plan to taste some of the local beer. It's drizzling the second time we're out, and I'm sure uh, before the sunset it will be sunny one more time. <laughs> but I can prepare the Lviv. In the evening, we got our second dose of coffee at SDV Coffee. Hands down, the best coffee shop in Lviv. Very cozy place, specialty coffee, alternative brewing, you get the drill. It's on the border of Lviv Historic Center, hence not many tourists know about it and go here, which if you ask me is a big plus. Eugene found this great book, City Coffee Guide, with the best coffee shops in all of the Ukraine. Sweet Coffee, Black Honey, and SDB Coffee, in which you are right now. Actually, I'm surprised in all of Lviv are only three coffee shops that made the list because if I were to compare it to Odessa, there are eight places. So the whole assumption that uh, Lviv coffee is the best coffee in Ukraine kind of starts to crumble. Otherwise, why do they have so little coffee shops in the book? A good day starts with good breakfast, and we had ours at Svitkavli, which is a famous coffee shop right on Rynak Square. 
We booked a tour of Leap that was supposed to start in 15 minutes. We were in a rush, so our breakfast was very basic, but I wanted to return to this place to get a second taste. The bill is for 317 grivnias, espresso, cappuccino, and two pieces of quiche with uh, salmon. This is my second attempt to get a good breakfast in the city center. We are at Sweet Kavit. Today is also the day when they celebrate the day of Lviv, thus the horse parade behind me. So let's get a taste of the coffee. Mm, still a little bit bitter for my taste. So let me show you the breakfast. I have a piece of salmon here, uh, some avocado, some uh, cream cheese, butter, jam, and a soft boiled egg. This is the perfect hipster Instagram breakfast for you here. I'm not very diligent about researching about the place that I'm going to visit, reading about it. So having someone who knows their stuff and who can tell me about the history of the city makes the trip really interesting. We booked a tour of medieval Lviv, which is the old town, and the tour lasted for two hours. We saw churches, strolled through dungeons, visited courtyards, and um, the two hours was really not enough to see everything in medieval Lviv. I felt towards the end of the tour like we were rushing through things just because our guide wanted to show us more. So I do recommend you get at least a three hours tour. One hour with a guide will cost you 300 grivnias. We booked a tour in Russian, but I think that in English will be pretty much the same price. Obviously, even if I wanted to, I can summarize all the information about Lviv and the jokes and, you know, the interesting facts that I got from the tour, but I can show you some of my favorite spots. I noted them down during the tour and then I made a point of returning there and exploring them at leisure. <laughs> The place is called Under the Blue Bottle and it's a very atmospheric place, it's a very nice location. A little bit hidden, but I'm sure you can find it and enjoy here a great cup of coffee and a good dessert. The father of coffee in Lviv is Yuri Kulchitsky. Uh, Yuri Kulchitsky was held a prisoner in the Ottoman Empire for a very long time where he learned the Turkish language and the Turkish traditions. So during the siege of Vienna, he was the one who snuck out of Vienna through the Turkish camp and then coordinated with the people who want to defend Vienna. When the battle was won and Vienna was freed, obviously people did not forget about him. He was interested in the bags of coffee that the Turkish people had with them. At that point in time, nobody really knew what these black beans were supposed to be. They thought it was feed for the camels or the horses. So he got almost 300 bags of coffee for free. With this investment, he started his own coffee shop in Vienna. He opened the coffee shop. It was not very popular with Europeans because they didn't like the bitter taste of coffee. And to make it more palatable, he added sugar and milk. His coffee shop was a success. And from Vienna, he was able to expand his coffee business into other cities and then ultimately in Leeds. The next place, the Italian courtyard, is located inside of the History Museum. You have to buy a separate 10 grivna ticket to get access to it. It was built by the king Jan Sobieski for his wife and it was supposed to be just that, an Italian courtyard in the middle of Ukraine. The spot is just perfect for photos. And on your way out, don't forget to visit the cool antique store. I couldn't skip Dominican Cathedral. Its green domes immediately attract your attention, but you stay from the tasteful Baroque interiors. Compared to the excesses of other cathedrals in Lviv, this one seems like the elegant sibling. Visited during service hours to hear some of the beautiful singing. It's a Christian Orthodox church now. My most favorite neighborhood has to be the Armenian one, a perfect place to sit in a cafe, sip coffee and admire life around you. I really like the Tsiga Art Center, which is at the end of the Armenian street, a place where you can admire art and also get some food, which I think is an amazing proposition. And just so you don't miss the place, there is a quirky sculpture of a smiling fish by a local artist just in front of it. Hello there. 
The centerpiece of the Armenian neighborhood is the Armenian Cathedral. It was built in 1370, which makes it one of the oldest churches in Lviv. The architect was a mason, so there's a lot of mason symbolism encrypted in those beautiful frescoes. The tower is impressive. I've never seen such towers in churches. The entrance to the cathedral is from Krakivska Street, not the Armenian Street. I've seen so many tourists confuse this. And seal the deal with a visit to Mons Pius, Lviv's former Armenian bank, now turned restaurant, that serves amazing steak. We simply fell in love with the terrace, so we decided to come back for dinner. We really wanted to sit outside among the flowers and the sculptures, but it was so cold that day, so we have to sit inside. Food was extraordinary. I got fish, Eugene a paper steak, plus local beer. The place is on the pricey side, but definitely worth a visit. After a thorough excursion of Lviv, you're gonna eat some delicious ribs at this iconic place, uh, Ribarnia Pid Arsenalne. <laughs> They have a really good selection of grilled meats and nothing else, and also good beer, so I'm really looking forward to dig my teeth into all that greasy meat. So Eugene has to eat everything with his hands. <laughs> this, <laughs> this turned out to be more um, complicated than we expected. For example, I'm trying to use this bacon as a scoop for the potatoes, which are falling apart. It's honestly more complicated than it needs to be, but it could be a lot of fun, I guess, as a touristic place. The aftermath of our trip to the Ribarnia is 411 grivnas, uh, 299 for the food and 112 for drinks. Obviously, Lvivska Kopalnia Kava is a very touristic spot, but since we are on a quest to determine whether Lviv is indeed the capital of coffee in Ukraine, we have to visit it, guys. This is the place where they roast the coffee and this is the place where they grind it. And then, if we go on further, look at this collection of different kettles in which you can prepare coffee. Whoa. We are going to mine coffee beans together. Probably you didn't know, but coffee beans are actually extracted from the ground in Lviv. Oh, you're extracting coffee. Nice. These are all coffee beans from the ground. Eugene is our miner. You might not be a big fan of coffee mining and other artistic and touristy things, but you can't deny that their terrace inside of the Lvivska Kapalnya Kava is absolutely charming. I got myself a Galician cappuccino and Eugene got himself one of their coffee specialties and a drunk cherry cake, which we are going to thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> Many coffee houses in Lviv have coffee prepared in a Turkish Cezva or Ibrik, which means the coffee is finely grounded, pretty dark roast, and then brewed with water. As a result, the coffee grounds are at the bottom of the cup, and if you're not paying attention and you're stirring your coffee or your cappuccino, you end up with a lot of coffee grounds in your mouth. One coffee, one cappuccino, and one piece of drunk cherry cake is 195 grivnias. What are we going to do, Eugene? Go home. Go home or drink beer? We got two very interesting beers. Eugene has an IPA from Varvar, which is a local Lviv brand, but it's not bitter at all. It has only 25 IBU, which is a measurement of bitterness. And look at this pretty packaging. And for me, I got something very exotic, a Pravda beer with Tom Yum flavor. Let's have a taste. They put some lime and kefir leaves in it. Mm. 
fantastic. For beer, we paid 65 and 79 grivnes.